Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where Angel and I take time and answer some of the many questions that y'all have sent in to us. And there's been some good ones, so we're going to cover some of those today. And Angel, what do you think? I think it's right. I do want to mention that uh, if, if you've ever, if you like this program and you'd like to get more involved, you can become a partner with us. Uh, we certainly would appreciate that. Yes. We, we, we are not a church. We don't get pies. <laughs> so we are totally dependent on the gifts of others. So yes. uh, anything you can help would help. You can check it out at joemcgee.com. Thank you, guys. And Joe, my daughter is dating a boy and I just have a bad feeling about him. The problem is that I don't have any evidence to support it. I don't know how to bring this up to my daughter without anything to back it up besides the gut feeling. Do you have any advice? Have you ever experienced this? Mm-hmm, I, have. I have experienced it big time. Angel, jump in. Uh, when my son was in college, he dated a girl that was... <laughs> And he was Christian college, so she came from a ministerial family and all, but she was very manipulative. And uh, it just immediately drew, drove a wedge between our family. And it was just, immediately you could just see the division that it was it was just not a healthy relationship. And so for the first time, my, my son and daughter are, Best friends have always been best Very friends. Close. To this day, are extremely close, and even their relationship was getting a little bit strained during this time. And uh, so, one day, my son comes to me and he says, "Hey, mom, I'm gonna quit school and I'm moving to North Carolina with her." And um, you know, I said, oh, "Let me tell you something, son." I said, "I've been a single mother for many years now. I've put you through private school." And now I've paid for three years of private college. You are going to finish that diploma if you do it for me. And I have to walk you to class in my pajamas every day. You are going to graduate. She's not making this up. She literally said this. So when my son graduated, it's so funny. He got on the cover of a magazine here locally. (laughs) Uh, He's got both of his arms raised in his air, air, and he came and he handed me his diploma. And he, he said, I thank you. That was the worst relationship I ever got into. <laughs> and so he's very happily married now. Very. But let me just say, you got to be very careful what you say. I said more than I should have, and it got, it was ugly. So I would say, pray. You can pray many a child in and out of a relationship. Yes, so I would just start praying that that it would be exposed like it needed to be. Yeah, take blindness from their minds and light in the eyes to understand there's a many New Testament prayers you can start praying for your kids. Uh, and that's the reason God's got them in there so you can pray. So I always believe, I don't want to get caught up pleading. I'm just, oh, we're in trouble. It's bad. No, I want to say what God says. You know, getting two walk together unless they're agreed. And I said, no, you're hooked up to somebody that's never getting, getting or even with. Now, as an adult, you can see that, but your kids can't always see it. But you can pray, Lord, take blindness from their minds. Send laborers across the path. Talk someone to go to sleep when they wake up. Lord, you promise. You promise. So remind God of his word and he'll he'll bring it to pass. Yes, he will. I think my mom prayed me out of many a relationship. <laughs> no. Thank God. <laughs> How do you handle people in life who just have no filter? It drives me crazy when people just say whatever comes to their head and don't think about it. How it makes people feel or the consequences of it. I bite my tongue a lot, but sometimes I just want to tell them off. How do you walk in love in these situations? Try to avoid them at all costs. (laughs) Yeah, don't go to lunch with them. Don't hang out with them. Don't spend spare time with them. Uh, This is a this a wacky relationship, and so every time you go to lunch with somebody, you come away mad. Like, well, probably not shouldn't go to lunch with them anymore. You know. well, you're going to lie? No, I'm not going to lie. I just don't have time to go to lunch with you. Well, I've been related to a person that was like that. And um, <laughs> it's it, not funny, but it is. No, it's he, my mother. Let me just put it out there. was like that. And sometimes I would just be horrified 
at things that, that she would say. And I would just think, mom, have you, but she would, I was just surprised that somebody didn't knock her teeth out at some point. <laughs> but uh, She didn't care where she was or who heard her. She just hit her brain, came out of her mouth. There was no filter at all. And it was like that to the day she passed. <laughs> and uh, good woman, good woman. So it would, it was, it was t- embarrassing to me a lot as a child. But as a, an adult, what I realized is people, I people loved her at church, especially. And I would always be like, "Are you talking about my mom?" <laughs> and um, so I was just like, "Okay, maybe what I'm seeing is different than what they're seeing. Yeah, but- Their relationship is different." So. Yeah, I mean, if it's just totally irritating you and you don't have to have them in your life, then I would just avoid them, like Joe said. But if you're related to them, like I was, <laughs> and you have no choice. <laughs> you just have to. I would, as I became an adult, I would say stuff, you know, and I, but it it didn't slow her down. <laughs> it did not slow her down one bit. I uh, love it. So, uh, anyway, it, it was a. Uh, an interesting upbringing, to say the least. Mm-hmm. But there's always going to be those people, what well, they call them, irregular people in yep. your life. Yep, yep. God loves you enough to send them across your path. To I would say, I always say that they're helping to develop the fruit of the spirit in my life: <laughs> love, joy, peace, patience, yeah. long suffering. Can you explain this scripture to me? I never really understood it, but has always stuck out to me. Proverbs thirteen twelve: Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a long fulfilled is a tree of life. Is it talking about putting your hope in the wrong things? Is it talking about physical sickness? It's talking about not having hope. Hope deferred. People lose hope. Uh, hope is the the preface to faith. You can't faith faith works by having hope. You know, and you've met hopeless people. They don't have any faith. They have no hope. Why would I use fake? I have no hope. There's no, it's hopeless. There's nothing to believe for. There's nothing I can do. It's hopeless. And so it's the first stage of getting into the negative thing. So, but hope deferred makes the heart sick. That's what it is. So you got to have some hope. What is it? Well, you know, God did it for him. Maybe he'll do it for me. If God did it for, you know, my brother, maybe he'll do it for me. If God helped them, maybe God will help me. And so then, you, it drives you to church, you get in the Word of God, and you realize, well, God will do this. It's in the Word. God, if, well, that's why God did it. It's in the Scripture. So I'm going to start believing the Scripture. So I used to tell my kids, you need to find two or three Scriptures for whatever you're believing God for. Well, it's a raise, a relationship, a friendship, a spouse. You need to start believing God. And how do you do that? You say what God says. I am the redeemed of the Lord, and I'm going to say so. I'm going to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Everything I set my hand to is going to prosper. People like me that don't even know why, because God's going to surround the righteous with the shield of divine favor. I prayed that for all my kids coming through high school, especially. Well, nobody likes me. Well, maybe you're rude. Maybe you got bad breath. They need to take your breath mint and learn how to count a conversation. Maybe learn how to ask more questions than talking about yourself. So there's there's some carnal aspect. How do you do this? But the spiritual side also, like, you need to believe God. So what you say, sugar? We don't talk about hope very much nope. in the in our circles, uh, but it's I've seen hope sustain somebody till their faith kicks in. Yeah, thank you. And, oh, that's um, huge. And oh, so, uh, yeah, hope deferred. If you if you just like Joe said, feel hopeless. You ever seen somebody that's like total like Eeyore through life? Yep. And uh, it's just it's a, just sad. They're depressed. They're it's like they have a a cloud of. Depression and they don't want to change. They, yeah. they would stay home all the time, stay in the house, doors locked, locked blinds pulled, nothing on but a TV. They live in the dark and they just, it's a bad place to be, man. It's going backwards. It is. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us today. We sure love you. Smile, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a great week and we'll see you again. Love you guys. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.